Hey guys, welcome to the shop of the Wood Craftsman. I'm going to be doing a small video series that could be possibly several parts in um, basically going through um, the functions and basics of a VFD. VFD stands for Variable Frequency Drive. VFDs are becoming more and more popular in the small shop, whether it's metalworking or woodworking, just for a lot of us who don't have three-phase power or are very limited with three-phase power. Uh, the VFD has um, pros and also has cons and it has advantages and disadvantages over some other similar systems. For example, if you have just a machine that is three phase, you want to run on single phase power, a VFD will do that for you. If you have multiple machines, for example, that require three phase power, you might be better off actually buying a rotary phase converter um, or also uh, there's another one that's um, an electronic version. I don't remember what the name of it is, but it's, it's uh, basically a solid state version of a uh, rotary phase. A static phase converter is basically nothing more than um, a box that houses uh, start capacitors and possibly some run capacitors that will get a three phase motor started on single phase and once the motor is up and running the uh, start capacitors drop out and you're still running on single phase. Um, they're typically designed for an application where the load is variable. Um, something where you can control the load such as like a drill press or maybe a table saw things like that but not really designed for a constant loaded application just for the simple reason that um, they basically advertise saying that the static phase converters are only giving two-thirds of the horsepower rated horsepower so on a application like an air compressor a static phase converter isn't really um, ideal it'd be either a rotary phase converter or a variable frequency drive so what I have here is a brand new Balder um, it's a VST series, VS1ST23-02. Um, this is what they call a micro drive. The enclosure is what they call an IP20. Now the IP20 basically means it is an enclosed drive, but the terminals are what they call finger safe. So all the wiring for the drive is still on the exterior of the drive. Therefore, this particular drive would have to go into a enclosure of some sort with ample space around it so that the drive can cool sufficiently. Now, I bought this basically for a different application for one I've used in the past where I had a VFD failure. Um, I actually have a video out on that, but uh, this will be kind of a later project when I get time, but I figured right now would be a really good time just to show you the basics and the function um, functions of a variable frequency drive. So we have a manual. I've gone through this a little bit before. Um, the manuals for Balder have improved. Um, there's a lot of good information in it, but let's take a look at the drive here. Okay, so I mentioned that this is what they call a micro drive, and the reason being is this is a three horsepower drive for single or three phase input. Um, and I'll talk about the single and three phase input very shortly here. But basically for this size drive, if it was a NEMA 1 enclosure, it'd be a little bit bigger in size. Uh, the micro drives have really kind of taken a place in the OEM um, applications. For example, if you buy a machine such as a CNC router um, or anything else, this drive would more than likely be in a separate enclosure that houses a lot of other electrical components. Um, reason they call this an IP20 is the drive itself is completely enclosed, but your electrical terminals are still on the outside yet. And the IP20 rating is, from my understanding, is that you can't actually make contact with the terminals to get electric shock. So it's kind of a good thing for it, but at the same, thing, same time it still needs to be in an enclosure. Now, I've never owned this particular model before. I've got a couple Balder 15Hs and an 18H, and this is actually going to be replacing the 18H. This particular drive is a dual purpose drive. It's a variable frequency drive and a sensorless vector drive, however you want to set it up. There's some configurations inside the uh, programming module that you can change as far as how the drive reacts with the motor. Um, for this application, for its intended application, I'll probably use the sensorless vector drive just for the simple reason that a sensorless vector drive is more of a truer constant torque 
application. So whatever RPM or frequency you're running the electric motor at, it'll have its full potential horsepower within a specific range. So um, I'll do a little bit more research on the sensorless vector, but there's quite a few other videos out there as well. Um, it's one of those things that uh, there's a use for it and then there's kind of a, a use that you don't necessarily need. So most everything that I run a VFD on is more so just an actual variable frequency drive. I'm not using the sensorless vector. Um, to in purpose of keeping this video short, I'm going to try to really minimize as far as the talk of sensorless vector and flux vector drive. But I just want to put this in there so you kind of understand what the real differences are. So if you do come across one, you know what it is. A sensorless vector drive is basically a glorified VFD. It has all the same functions as a variable frequency drive, but it's got a few more. And basically what happens is in a sensorless vector drive, you set the drive up to communicate with the motor via the motor load and whether it's coupled or uncoupled. And the drive learns what the motor's characteristics are with, at variable different frequencies and different RPMs. Once it's established that, they basically call that tuning the drive to the motor or tuning the motor. The drive learns what the motor's capability is. It learns what the magnetic field amps are. It, it knows what the um, the stator is doing, what the armature is doing, or the rotor is doing in this case. It, the drive basically figures out the motor basically by what the motor is doing as far as amps and, and frequency things like that. So that basically is a glorified VFD, is what they call a senseless vector. But if you have a flux vector drive, a flux vector is actually where the electric motor has an encoder mounted usually on the opposite end of the shaft. Usually if it's a fan cooled motor, it might actually have a separate electrically driven fan. And then there's an encoder that mounts on the shaft where the fan would have been for the cooling of the motor. Um, but basically what it does is it provides real time feedback to the vector drive and it's typically used in applications where motors maybe need to be synchronized with one another. For example, a conveyor belt within a factory, you have multiple drive stations on a single conveyor. Um, you would have a master drive, and then you'd have a slave or several slaves. And the way it works is the master drive is driving the master motor, and there is an encoder on that motor that provides real-time RPM feedback to the drive to let the drive know that, okay, I'm putting out 1,000 RPMs. And the drive will do whatever it takes, speed up or slow down, increase or decrease the voltage and frequency to do whatever it takes to maintain that specific RPM. In that same configuration with the slave motors, this drive would also communicate with slave vector, or slave vector drives as well, showing that um, I need you to be running at this specific RPM. You need to do whatever you need to do to make sure that your motors are running at this specific RPM. So if you watch a, a vector drive, you'll see on the display that the RPM will stay constant, but the frequency and voltage will be moving up and down constantly. So. That's what, a, that's what a flux vector or a vector drive is. In the woodworking industry, I don't really have no, know of any applications. Um, maybe a CNC router, but I think a lot of the CNC routers, they, you know, they've got the motors really wound up to handle the high frequency to work with these drives. Um, a CNC router motor, for example, they don't run at a typical 60 hertz frequency. They could go all the way up to probably 1,000 um, hertz or frequency just because of the high spindle RPM. I've seen some videos out in the past where people have taken a 3450 RPM motor, which is a two pole motor, and wind it up to 300 hertz. And you know, the motor is really just singing away, but the problem is, is the motor is not designed for that high RPM. There's a, a trade off in the, in the volts to hertz ratio that once you get past a certain rated frequency, you start trading off torque for speed. So um, Aussie 50 had a little bit of a video on this where he actually t made a generator out of a washing machine motor and a three phase motor. And what he found out was is that there was actually what they call rotor slip um, where the motor was running so fast. And what happened was is because of the speed of the motor and the relationship of the volts to frequency ratio that after a certain point on, on time, the load on the motor increases and you start losing the torque because you've lost it in RPM. So 
Um, it's one of those things that, you know, it's kind of fun to mess with, but there's applications where you need, need to make sure your drive is sized accordingly to your motor. All right, so this particular drive, as I mentioned earlier, is what they call an IP20. You have the output terminals, and then you have the input terminals. This still needs to go in an enclosure, and I've actually been looking for an enclosure. I haven't found it yet, but this will actually go in an enclosure once it's all set up. Um, I believe this drive is possibly also discontinued. I got this dirt cheap on an online auction, brand new in the box, delivered for about 100 bucks. Uh, typically probably resale for probably about 550, 600. So um, I've had a little bit of bad experience with buying VFDs on an auction, but only one that I know of um, is where I couldn't actually get it to work remotely. I could only make it work off of the keypad. So, all right, so, I'm going to show you kind of how this gets wired up. Now, the one thing you want to make sure is when you get a drive, make sure that you got the owner's manual. These are really important because there's a lot of information here as far as working through the parameters. Um, this, this, these drives have a lot more capabilities than the average woodworker or machine shop or whatever would actually use. Um, a lot of us are just going to use it for a phase converter or variable speed application. And you still want to, to know as far as how to get in those parameters to be able to adjust it accordingly because there's a couple things that you want to set up at the beginning to make sure that um, it's operating to its full potential. So the, the manual will tell you a lot of different things. It'll tell you different wiring configurations for um, basically different um, start and stop configurations, different um, you know, whether you want to do a three-way switch or a um, stop-start station three-wire configuration, stop-start station two-wire configuration, um, different types of applications. There's a lot of different wiring configurations that you can use in this drive to make it work without using the keypad in the front. Because remember, this drive actually needs to be in a different enclosure. So the buttons on the front here would normally be used in a manual mode. For example, if you're troubleshooting or something, you'd use the functions on the front here to get into the drive to find out what's going on. But in the drive, it basically tells you how to, or in the manual, it tells you how to wire this um, for single phase or three phase. Now, I just want to put this out there. I'm going to put it out there with caution. Most any 200, 220 to 240 volt three phase drive can be run on 220 to 240 volts single phase input. Now this particular drive is rated for three phase input, 220 to 240, but it can run on single phase. However, the one thing to keep in mind, and this is where you kind of need to dig in with the manufacturer a little bit, sometimes they state it in the owner's manual, sometimes you need to contact the manufacturer, but a lot of variable frequency drives or VFDs or senseless vector drives, typically you have to derate the drive anywhere from 30% all up to 50% after a specific horsepower. I believe this one is after three horsepower, I need to derate it. I think it could be 50%, I'm not 100% for certain. But keep in mind that most every variable frequency drive, senseless vector drive or flux vector can be run on single phase at the single phase voltage of 220 to 240. Now in this owner's manual, I think it's a misprint, but it was talking about derating a drive that had a voltage input rating of 380 um, to 480 volts three phase. It did say derate for single phase input, but around here we don't have that high of a voltage in single phase, so I'm assuming that that actually should have been underneath the 220 to 240 volt rating. but. In the past history, I know that Balder was derating their drives after three horsepower with single phase input. So anything under three horsepower for a lot of manufacturers, you typically get the full output amps. So kind of keep that in mind. If you're looking at a, a VFD online, um, whether it's eBay or Craigslist or something, or an online seller that maybe be selling a wholesale um, you know, components that could be like one off or they could be surplus or something. Most of the time, a 220 to 240 volt three phase input VFT will work on single phase. The trade off would be number one is they typically would have a derating, uh, a derate um, output 
typically after three horsepower. And then the second thing is too, the wiring might be different from one brand to another. Um, I have one Balder VFD that I'm running single phase input in, but I had to run a jumper from L2 to L3 as well. Versus this one here is just saying to put input power single phase on L1 and L2. So make sure that you see that in the manual. And some other things to keep in mind as well, on the larger Balder drives especially, um, when you run them on single phase voltage, especially on the larger horsepower drives, I wanna say it's like 10 horsepower and up, there's something else you need to change in the wiring configuration within the drive. You have to change a, drum, uh, change a jumper um, within the drive, if I'm not mistaken, to basically make sure the drive knows that you're putting in single phase voltage. But like I said, I came across that in reading um, a manual for a larger VFD, just in curiosity. So if any questions, always check with the manufacturer. And if you didn't get an owner's manual, as long as you know the, ma the manufacturer and model number, a lot of these owner's manuals are online, either from the manufacturer or usually some generic website that has just a lot of owner's manuals on it. So if you don't have an owner's manual, make sure that you can find a copy, whether it's online or from the manufacturer, because you will want this owner's manual. This isn't just something where you just hook the two wires up to it or hook the wires up to it and plug it in. It's not quite that simple, but it's, it's close. All right, so um, basically I'm just gonna start hooking this up. Now on this particular drive, they do identify it as L1, L2, and L3. And then um, the output is U, V, and W, which I think is kind of an international term, but you might also see this as T1, T2, and T3. This is your output. It's really important that you put the input power in the input side and the output power in the output side. Um, if you don't, you could have an expensive mistake. Um, a channel by the name of AVE, um, he does a lot of um, videos on basically destructing products to see how well they're built. And he had a video where he smoked a VFD just because he wasn't paying attention. He'd put the input power in the output side and uh, basically when he went and turned it on, he had the magic blue smoke, which you don't wanna do that because if you have to buy these new, they're a few hundred bucks um, easily. So, all right. So I've already got, just to test this, to show you in an application, I've got this short cord here. It's got a plug on one end and it's got the uh, three wires on the other end. We've got a ground and three hots. And then for the input side, I have this cord here as well that has a ground and two hots for 220 volt single phase. And I've got a plug here on the other end to plug into one of my 20 amp 220 volt outlets.